We then see a younger male walk across from his unit. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest episodes of the murder tapes. Weta was in fact Jafarsi A. Tapley, and we have been in contact with him this whole time. For this list, we're looking at the most disturbing cases from the show that uses real footage to solve crimes. There are some sensitive topics covered within some entries, so viewer discretion is advised. Let us know which puzzling story left you speechless in the comments below. Number 10, Something Came Over Me. When an antique dealer suddenly disappears without a trace, local authorities use surveillance footage to trace her last steps. The trail leads detectives to her storage unit. What they find is particularly upsetting. At one point, he even kind of ducks behind a vehicle. As Mary Kay Wolfarth unloads her belongings, a strange man lurks behind her vehicle. This bizarre behavior is followed by him entering her storage unit. When Mary returns, she's never seen again. So the next thing we see on video is this male come out of uh, Katie's unit wearing like a blanket. His actions don't seem to make sense at first until we discover their sinister true purpose. His absence of remorse just makes it all even more chilling. It was dumb, I shouldn't have never done it. Obviously, I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. Number nine, the drop off. Moments after a shooting has taken place, first responders tend to Ahmad's fatal injury. His moans in the background make this montage very difficult to watch. As it turns out, nearby footage allows investigators to help identify the suspect. You can tell from the body language that there's obviously a dispute. The victim's brother recognizes the accused as his cousin. The motive appears to have been a disagreement over money. The person that the public clinic. The topic of money is often considered a taboo subject. This cautionary tale shows us the ugliest side of letting money get in the way of family. Even the killer admits that the conflict wasn't over anything that serious. But his heinous actions changed the lives of everyone involved. So we had a little altercation or whatever, whatever, but it wasn't that serious. Number eight, stay with us, Madison. This intimate betrayal highlights how little we know about what goes on in the minds of those we love. After 16-year-old Madison is fatally injured outside her home, the prime suspect is identified as her ex-boyfriend. At first, he talks about how much he loved her. However, when the investigators lie and say Madison survived her injuries, he confesses and demonstrates how he attacked her. So you killed her? Yeah, I mean, you said you stabbed her with a knife. It's as if a switch has flipped in his head, revealing the cold and calculating killer beneath the facade. She promised, she promised she going to be loyal to me. As he reenacts his crime, there's neither empathy nor remorse. And we all know from watching a lot of movies, jealous rage, people do hor horrific things when their relationship is ended. Number seven, what's in the backpack? There are some folks we come across in our daily routine who seem like fine people, but we never get to know who they really are. In this quiet Wisconsin community, police officers appear to conduct a wellness check on an elderly man named Robert Sharp. They find a horrific scene. Bloody footprints tell the tale of a brutal struggle, and the homeowner's corpse is found in the basement. When investigators conduct background research on Robert, they discover his daily fast food run. He's easy enough to recognize because he's a tall, slender, elderly gentleman. The case concludes with one of the restaurant's employees being caught with incriminating evidence. Uh, it appears to be stains on his clothing, specifically his pants. It's truly disturbing to think that one of those strangers we interact with daily could be hiding such a dark and dangerous side. Your selfish, violent, and senseless acts have brought anguish, fear, and suffering to many. Number six, the move out. A report of domestic disturbance leads police officers to three people fatally wounded by gunfire. The tragedy seems to have been the result of a dispute over unpaid rent. One of the victim's relatives comes across one of the suspects, and she covertly records their interaction. It's just, we're just trying to get a better understanding of what's going on and what exactly happened. To have a direct conversation with someone who may have committed murder takes a remarkable amount of bravery. But this brush with danger proved to be a pivotal breakthrough in the case. 
he admits he had a weapon on him the night the crime occurred. I told my sister and my mama what type of boy Corey was. My sister touched her heart and said it had to be an animal that took that boy life. Without the safety of law enforcement present, it's frightening to think of what could have happened. But thanks to this person's courage, the suspect won't be able to harm another person again. And he was sentenced to three consecutive life in prison sentences without the possibility of parole, plus 35 years. Number five, I'd kill them again. No family is without its fair share of drama, but sometimes jealousy can drive people to the darkest depths of their humanity. At first, this triple homicide seems to be the result of a botched robbery. But when investigators follow the trail of clues, their findings are even more disturbing. Upon an initial interview with a family member, he's almost immediately ruled out due to his cooperation. Basically, I was his only kind of brother figure in his life. Shockingly, an enigmatic central figure in the murder is later proven to be the family member authorities had initially interviewed. Who's Rita? Javarsi. Javarsi is Rita. He had been in contact with the investigators this whole time. Javarsi A. Tapley pleads guilty to three counts of malice murder. Number four, this guy's getting paranoid. When a woman's sudden disappearance prompts police officers to perform a welfare check, they discover an empty home in complete disarray. As it turns out, her ex-husband has been stalking her. He was arrested for violating the restraining order filed against him. He stalked her. So Fahad became an immediate person of interest for him. After several long months, a tip from a former cellmate pointed investigators to where they could find the missing woman's body. The murderer's confession details the way he threatened to humiliate her. It seems as though he wanted to extort her into coming back to their toxic relationship. This woman lost her life to someone who would rather protect his reputation than own up to his actions. I put her in a bag. Number three, so hateful. In this tragic whodunit, a violent act inspires unrest in the neighborhood. He got shot in the head. He, he's gone. Oh, he's gone no. Body cam footage documents high tensions, with a fight almost breaking out at the crime scene. The victim's brother had also lost his life in a similar fashion two years prior. This element of coincidence is eerie to say the least. To add to the hair-raising tale, this case is proven to be that of mistaken identity. The suspect thought Anthony was a Lester and for some reason decided to shoot who he believed was Lester. It appears that the criminal thought the victim was a completely different person. This case goes way beyond simple happenstance. The criminal was so enraged that he took out his anger on a stranger with terrifying brutality. Joel Miles is convicted of murder for the death of Anthony Pearson. Number two, Sergeant Hassel. A quiet Michigan community is disrupted by the sound of gunfire. It appears that the victim and his wife were on military leave to visit family for the holidays. His distraught spouse tearfully answers the officer's questions at the scene of the crime. And then I just heard gunshots. Okay. And I ran to put my son in the room and I came outside and he was laying on the car. The investigation discovers that the culprit was someone who served in the military with the victim and his wife. When she admits that the crime was premeditated, our blood runs cold. Why did you do it, Korea? No, it was just planned in Korea. We, it wasn't to be done in Korea. It was just planned in Korea when we got back to the States. Her performance as the grieving widow is revealed as a sham. She manipulated the police and the victim's family to her own ends. We like to think we know everything about the person we marry, but when infidelity enters the picture, a more violent nature could boil over. Kamaya Hassel was convicted of first-degree premeditated murder. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Footprints in the Snow This spine-chilling story begins with a brutal attack on two women, one of whom is fatally injured. All signs point to her husband. However, his alibi is airtight. I went and got a six-pack of beer around midnight at uh, Town Pump. But a second, smaller set of bloody footprints found at the crime scene implies something utterly dreadful. An intense interview comes to a shocking realization. In the middle of the night, the husband brought his son to commit the murder. The terror he describes is heartbreaking. <laughs> We're supposed to trust our parents to have our well-being as their highest priority. But for this child, 
that trust was torn to shreds in a single night. <laughs>